Hi, all you lovely creative people. This is June from Open Witch Lane Designs, showing you my new latest creation, my garden urn. I love this project, and one of the reasons why I love this project is you don't need any artistic ability to do it. If you can glue, mix, and dab paint, then you too can do this. Now, I happen to be very lucky. I had this old terracotta pot hanging out that I wasn't using for any of my plants. So I decided to make it into a garden urn because I happen to love the height of garden urns. And they're very, very expensive outside trying to buy a really pretty one. So if you have a, a, a beautiful terracotta that you can use, that's half the expense right there. Uh, I've also used... Um, and I'll explain to you some sofa legs and some clay sauces. And right now, this has some full uh, greenery in it. And I'm going to be taking that out right in a few minutes, not a few minutes, in a day or two, and putting in some Christmas greens in there. And it can take them. It's pretty hefty right now because this is all terracotta and wood. So it has some um, weight to it. As a matter of fact, my left arm is going to have muscles by the time I finish uh, vi videoing the opening to this whole project. But um, I'm going to be putting in some Christmas greeneries and having it hang out in my house and, and being a very very interesting piece because I customize it to what I want it to look like, just like you can to yours. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started to build this. Um, this is my clay pot. Um, this is a, I think this is the six inch wide saucer. It's down in the descriptions. I got two of the little saucers, some sand that you can get at Dollar Tree. This has some um, beige sand in it. I, I combined it my sand because I had some from Michael's and I had some from Dollar Tree and I just keep it all in the same container, use it, refill it, uh, and use it again. And this is my sofa leg. Now this originally came with and I can, oh, okay. This originally came with one of those like bolt screws coming out of the bottom. I asked someone, a friend of mine, to take it out because I couldn't turn it. And it came with this top because it usually um, sits like this. You put this into the sofa. I sawed the top, this piece off the top, and it was a little uneven. I tried it to sand it. So I couldn't sand it so it wouldn't like wobble because there was some part here. This is very hard wood. So I took a drill bit and I have one of those drill bits that shaves off like this. And I just shaved a little piece of that off so that when I make the connection to the pot, whatever pot to the pot, this is at least flat. Okay, now this is, uh, this was a very more expensive sofa leg. There are other sofa legs that aren't as expensive, but I thought this went really well with the pot. It was decorative, so that's the reason why I spent money on that. Uh, also, you're going to be using some Mod Podge. And Mod Podge, sorry, I used the mat. And I just got this today because I looked online and it said that the Clear Gorilla Glue uh, is really good for bonding ceramics, which is what I need. So, and it doesn't, and I, and it's no foam. So I like that. I've heard that this smells, I've never tried it before, but I will let you know. Okay. So in your sauces, you have to make a combination. Let me clean some of this away. Oh, and, um, I had painted this and uh, we'll talk about painting and different finishes that you can use later on in the show when we get to it. The first thing you have to do is that pot is very heavy. And if you're using ceramics, it's they're pretty heavy. So I wanted to get some weight on my, my pieces. This is going to turn over and be like this. And then there is going to be this piece right on top of here. The sofa leg is going to go here. Let me see if I can show it to you. Well, you saw that you saw it in the, uh, the opening. And this has to go upside down like this. Because that clay pot that I'm using is pretty heavy, I wanted to make sure my base had some, um, some weight to it also. 
So I mixed some sand, which is what I'm going to do now, with some matte Mod Podge, mixed it together, and just packed it into the saucer. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, that takes a little while to dry. Uh, this one, I think, has been drying for about three days, and it's finally up to the point where I think it's totally dry, where I feel comfortable going forward. This one took a little bit less time. Uh, it gets really hard, uh, so I don't, you know, I feel confident in that. So you just wait a day or two. This is not something that has to be done all in one day. Well, it can't be all done in all in one day because you have to let it sit and dry and cure. Now, the best way to measure how much sand you need is to just fill up your container that you're putting the sand in so you get a pretty good idea. And if you do a little bit extra, it's, it's not a big deal. That sand was 99 cents for a whole big bag of it. I put it in a bowl and I just mix up some Mod Podge in it. This one's pretty empty, but so we're going to help it along a little bit. I have another one here that I have, but I'd like to use got a little gunky in it but that's okay because it doesn't matter okay I'm just going to cover this and turn it upside down to get some more of that glue and you just mix it up I I don't measure how much uh, Mod Podge I'm putting in here you just you just want to get your sand all clumpy and wet. And if you make it a little too wet, the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to take a little bit longer drying time. And that's not that's not so bad. Now, what's nice about this craft is the majority of the things that you're buying, you could all get in one store. What I did with a lot of the, um, the clay sauces and also the sofa leg is I ordered it at Home Depot. And I had it delivered to the store that's located near me. And I went and picked it up. You can order the Gorilla Glue there. I don't know so much about the sand because uh, I think you would get a really big bag of sand. But my my dollar store, my Dollar Tree store is right next to my Home Depot. So that was that was sort of convenient. This is not going to be used for anything else. So let's go. And this is messy. For the record, this is the messy part of the craft. No matter how neat I try to be with this, it always I always feel like there's grit all over the place after I'm done. Okay, so you just want it wet. Now, I use Mod Podge because that's what I have. I used uh, white glue before, but then I would water it down because you're going to be using, I mean, I use uh, Aileen's Tacky Glue, but I did water it down because it was very thick. But Mod Podge works just, just fine. And you just put it in here. You put it in your saucer. Now, if you were not using, I mean, this can be made with a lot of different things. You could make, uh, instead of using a clay pot, you could use a, um, a bowl if you wanted to, if you had a pretty bowl that you don't mind painting um, and doing different finishes on.
I just like to do this to add the weight because I don't want this to tip over. If you bowl this light away, maybe you wouldn't have to go through all of this, but this is fine for me. Okay, so you try to even it out as much as you can. Uh, the other thing besides adding weight, it gives more of a surface area to glue things to, which is very good because you really want, you don't want this thing to fall apart. You don't want your garden urn to fall apart. The other thing is, I'm not putting this outside. This is going to stay indoors. Now, if I was putting this outside to do this step, I might use different, um, I might, I think there's an outdoor Mod Podge that you can use or something that's okay with the elements. Uh, I don't know, but I'm not, you know, you would have to research that if you want to put it outside to make sure that you're not um, putting something together that won't withstand. And then the, um, the elements, the weather. I'm just, I look, it looked a little like it was a little overfilled there. So I'm just taking some off. I'm using an old gift card. Wait a minute. I do have my ruler, which would be a better. Okay. There you go. And then you just set that over on the side to dry. And while that's drying, in the meantime, since I've already done, did, done, no, I've already did two of them, I'm going to use the glue right now and glue these other two pieces together. Okay. Let's get this on the side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to try this Gorilla Glue and see it's supposed to be the strongest thing. For non-purpose surfaces only, it says, lightly dampen one surface with water. Do not add water to the bottle. Okay, so that's for non-purpose surfaces only. This is porous and this is basically porous. So let's see what the scoop is with this. Okay. I don't think I have to hit anything. And it doesn't give me any other warnings. Keep out of reach of children. First aid. Wipe. After each use, you wipe the nozzle clean with a dry cloth and tightly replace lid. And it says to keep this exposed to light because supposedly light keeps it from yellowing. That's interesting. So I'm putting a generous amount here. Okay. I don't smell any really bad odor with this stuff. I don't know what that comment online was talking about. Well, it's a live one. Say clean the nozzle, which I did, and close it tightly. Okay. Now, I'm just going to put this on top. I don't know if I'm feeling contact. I'm going to put the glue on both sides. How's that? So I didn't really feel contact, even with the sand. So I'm going to make sure there's contact with glue because the last thing I want is for this to fall apart. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I not in screen? There we go. Just putting glue all over this and around the edge. It's not a thick glue. Well, I think I got a little bit of an odor there, but it's not bad. I mean, I've smelt worse. Okay. E6000, although we love it. Oh, that cap is alive, I tell you. The cap is alive. All right, here we go. You 
turning it around so hopefully there's contact with everything okay I got glue on my fingers which is uh, part of the course I'm just wiping it off because I read somewhere that if you don't wipe it off once this dries you have to chisel it off I'm like oh great chiseling that'll be a fun adventure to chisel and I'm just going to take this and put this on the floor on the side. I'm checking to make sure that I was pretty centered. And I happen to be very lucky with this saucer matching up pretty well with this pot. I'm not sure about other pots. But if you're in Home Depot, you could get a clay pot or wherever you are, Lowe's, Home Depot, any place, and or even garden supply stores and try to match up your bottoms. I just thought this gave it a better look, this kind of a bottom, and especially once it's all one color and painted, than um, just the straight cut off of the pot. So I'm just gonna put this on the floor over here. Alrighty, get the cap that seems to wanna, be, it's quite a, little, uh, quite a little lively cap there. Clean off the nozzle, throw this out because I have a ton of glue on it, and tightly cap this. Okay, now that I showed you this, I don't need to keep that anymore. Where's my sand? Over here. Now, oh, I wanted to also show you that you can even sand um, terracotta. I didn't know. Who knew? But because I never do it, if you wanted to sand it to get it a little rough, you can sand it. I can't show it to you now because I just used it. I just put this stuff in here, but the bottom of this saucer was a little rough, and I just used the sandpaper to smooth it, smooth it out a little bit. That's also you can get at you know your hardware store of choice. Okay, now. And let's put this away so I have my instructions because I'd like to read more about that. All right. And I don't need this. You know what? I'll put this on top of this and get this. Now, since I am painting this with a um, sort of like a crackle finish and I am not giving a one coat coverage, I have to paint this the color of terracotta because uh, I'm going to be putting for my paint finish now if you're not doing the same paint finish if you're going to paint this urn entirely white and highlight it in gold or silver then you don't have to worry about this step um, or if you're going to paint it black and, and put gold wax highlights on this, you don't have to worry about this step. Basically, because I use sort of like a dirty clay pot look, I still want the terracotta color to come through. And so I have to paint this to be looking like terracotta. So I have burnt sienna. This is my Liquitex Heavy Body Paints. Again, if you're not, you know, looking to uh, make the terracotta color come through, this is a step you don't have to do with your sofa leg. And like uh, I mentioned that this one was a little bit on the expensive side. They have some very pretty ones that aren't as expensive as expensive here uh, that you can purchase I have a little sip of coffee while I'm mixing paints I used, what I use? I used burnt sienna, and this is Deco Art Antique Gold, just to lighten up my burnt sienna. 
a little bit. And I'm going to start painting this so you can see. And then until everything, this is pretty close. Let's see. Okay, could be a little bit lighter. It doesn't have to be an exact match because like I said, I am going to be putting other finishes on this. If you wanted to make yours all look terracotta, uh, then you would have to pay more attention to to this coat to this color. I just want to make it have this background. So when I put my other finishes on top, it would look like this was you know the same thing. Everything was the same. But even all of my clay, clay pots came in different colors. The one that I uh, painted in like a grungy type effect, um, that one was outside. I've had that pot for a really long time. And that was even a different color than my sauces. But it doesn't, it just, people are not going to be examining to make sure as long as it doesn't look obvious. That's the main part of this. You don't want to make it look obvious. Now, how this comes out and what pieces you use is going to determine what kind of an urn you're going to be making. Uh, again, if, ooh, there goes paint. No wonder, I, I always get paint all over me. I am not the neat painter. If you were painting all of these pieces in black and then doing a gold finish on it, that would be probably a little bit more classic or gothic. Um, you could do shabby chic by doing your, your whites. And, um, you know, there's, the, it's basically, and I was thinking about this, color determines a lot what a piece looks like. If I did this all in gold, an antique gold, that could maybe look a little bit like Victorian. Um, so what you paint and how you paint this is going to be really determine what style this ends up being. And I'm gonna to try to get in all the crevices. And there are a lot of little crevices here. Okay, so you don't have to watch me paint all this, and I don't need to take time because I'm trying to make my videos a little bit shorter. You saw what I did with the sand, mixing it with the Mod Podge and putting it in the sauces. You have to wait for that to dry, depending. It, take, it could take a day. It could take two to three days. Then I'm going to paint this, and once this is dry and my sauces are all dry, I'm going to use the way to go. If this product is working for me, I'm going to use the clear Gorilla Glue and glue them all together and let them stay because, again, um, letting glues, glues uh, set or mature or whatever you want to call it for 24 hours is always a, a good idea. I know E6000 really is um, something that you have to let wait for. Uh, 24 hours for really to mature and set and get and get hardened up and so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to get all of these pieces together and then we'll talk about the painting technique that I use to put on the entire urn so um, hang tight and I'll be back in a little bit Okay, so we've been through some changes since you lost last lost oh boy since you last saw this. I put it all together, and I know this is a different color. I'll get to that in a second, but I just wanted to show you. I used the Gorilla Clear Glue, like I said, worked extremely well because I did have to put this in water for a little, or have water on it. I didn't submerge it, but there was some washing going on with this. 
between, but we'll get to that. Um, the saucer that I put down over here and the pot had a little bit of a gap that I didn't like. So I had these earphones that didn't work anymore. And I used this to wrap, glue it in and wrap it around. I used fabric tack to glue it in and wrap it around there just to close the gap to make this look like more of one piece. Then there was a gap between my sofa leg and my other clay saucer so it was a little bit thicker than this so I when I um the first time I tried to paint this it didn't look right so I put I wrapped one of these around here just like that okay and I use fabric tack okay now this gorilla glue is really lasting and this is what the problem was I had a whole other video in which I tried to do this but when I was putting the paint on here to try to match the effect that I had over here, I didn't do it the right way. The, the, te the technique is the same, but it, it didn't do it the right way. So I had to take all the paint off. I used a sponge with, and I also used, um, I guess you would call this a brass something or other, a brass bristle brush. And I pretty much washed all the paint off. <clears throat> so this paint that I'm putting on is not waterproof because I was able to get it off. So when you, if you are ever deciding to put your creation outside, you're going to have to use some kind of a, a, a varnish, a heavy duty varnish. It'll probably have to be an oil based because the, I'm not sure that the water based varnishes with, with, would withstand the weather. Okay. So after I uh, made my little mistake, which is another thing I want to talk about, when you're painting, if you're painting, it's not permanent. You can redo it. If you make an accident, you make an accident. If you have like not an accident, if you make a mistake and you don't like it, I'm redoing the whole thing. Also, I did put some paper clay, and I don't know if you can see it, um, little molds and I will be showing how I use paper clay in another video that's coming up right away uh, with the mold and I put it around the bottom saucer just to give it more of a decorative finish that would match the top again if you're using a plain uh, terracotta pot a plain uh, sofa leg and whatever you want to use on the bottom I mean you could even use square those square pieces of wood or those round pieces of wood from Michaels the, the small ones you could be using those if they fit so this does not have to be a very expensive craft at all I think you could get everything for probably under $25 if you have some painting mediums that you can use Again, I'm painting it the way I want to. You can you do anything you want. I was thinking about it um, while I was going through this whole mess. And I was thinking that since this was such a beautiful piece of wood before I painted all over it, I you could have stained this and waxed it and made it a very soft sheen. And then you could have painted the top and bottom a totally different color. You could have waxed this dark and make these like a black marble effect if you know how to do that. And I'm sure online or on YouTube, there are plenty of people who show you how to make a marble effect. And the terracotta pots will accept the paints. That's one of the nice things. They're very absorbent to the paints. They just don't keep the paints on, but that's because you need to do a varnish afterwards. Okay, so I messed it up. I cleaned it all up, and then I did paint it all over. Um, as you can see, some of it, you can still see the original paint on it, but I wanted it to be one sort of solid color on the bottom of this whole thing, so I did use my Liquitex Heavy Body uh, Burnt Sienna to paint it all sort of one tone. I know it's not, but it just gave me one tone on it. And then I used Deco Art Weathered Wood from Americana. I really like this stuff. There is a couple of things about it. It is a little thicker and you do have to let it dry thoroughly. Okay, now I did this last night and it's been drying all night long. It's got a shiny texture to it, but it won't be once I start putting my paints on. Okay, so I told you about that. Now, to get the, the technique I wanted and what I did wrong the, for, on the other video that I, um, I deleted was I just started off by using uh, the wrong color paint. 
Now, this is what I'm going to use to get the uh, effect that I want. I have folk art, home decor, sheepskin, and I have this, again, I don't know what the color, oh, wait, I'm sorry, it's linen. I finally found, <laughs> finally found after all this time where the color was. Okay, so this is folk art, acrylic paint, and this is linen, and I'm going to be using a combination of those two. I also hope my raw umber, raw umber, if you can see it, Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic. I'll be using my raw umber. I won't be using this. I might even put some black in it. And then at the end, I'm going to be just putting a little sap green around to give it like a mossy type. Like it's been out and it has some moss growing. Now, I know um, some of you people, my I this thing is so beat up because mainly... I use it as a palette. I need a lot of area as a palette. So I just put my paints down on here. I know a lot of people don't, what, you know, they use pat and that's fine. That's fine. You do it. You do you. And I'm going to have fun doing it my way. Just put a whole bunch of paint. You're going to need a lot of it on your little palette here. And I'll be adding more paint as I go. I don't want the color to be white. I'm just sort of mixing them together. It doesn't, with this particular way of painting it, the more that your colors don't exactly mix, the better off you are. The only thing is you don't want to apply too heavy a coat to begin with. Now let me get my shirt pulled up so I don't mess up my clothes as usual. And I'm just patting it on. I'm dabbing it, patting, whatever you want to call it. And I'm letting the crackle medium do its work. The more you get different color tones, the better off you'll be. I think I want to add some of this right away. Get it a little bit grungy. I'm going to use a lot of this. This is the raw umber. Get it a little bit more grungy to begin with. Now, if I wanted the official weathered wood type look, I would be brushing one way. You brush it and you move on, okay? You do not go over it. You just brush one stroke and then move on from it. But this, I don't want my crackle to go in one particular direction. Like with the weathered wood, I want it to go, I want it to crack small and all over the place. And as you can tell, I'm using a beat up brush. This is one of my favorite beat up brushes that I have. And I just go over the whole thing by patting it. If there's some background showing through, I can go back over it and see. This thing is heavy. This thing is very heavy. Can I just say that? Um, I'm glad I'm not making this as a gift and I'm keeping it because the shipping on this would be very intense. Now, I have seen people make... Oh, I've saw one person. No, two. Okay, never mind. I've seen people, stand by my first statement. I've seen people make uh, garden urns using Dollar Tree material. And they're very pretty. Um, what was her name? D-I-Y and, and it's uh, K-A-R-E-M. It does absolutely, I'm just adding a little bit of water because I'm feeling like my paint is getting a little thick. So as I was saying, DIY cream, and then patting out the water a little bit. Um, she made garden urn, she makes the garden urns using Dollar Tree stuff. 
and you can do the same. She uses uh, two plant containers, and I'm not sure if she puts something in between them. You know, top and bottom, turns one upside down. This just came from the idea that when I originally painted this pot up here, it just didn't have any presence. It was like very low to the floor, and I wanted to give it a little bit more presence. Now, once I'm finished with this, I am going to hit it with, I have a matte varnish spray. I don't want this shiny at all. Even the satin acrylic type polyurethane is, is a little too shiny for what I want. I want this to be very matte because I want it to look like it's been outdoors for a long time. Oh, okay, where's, okay, then I'm going to go back, put in a few other colors, pat in a few other colors. And when it's all dry, what I might do is I might spray it with the matte varnish and then take uh, my raw umber and make it a wash to make it all a little bit more grayer. I mean, brown, like a brown tone especially in these areas to get it to show the detail. But I don't want to ruin the crackle finish by putting more water on it. So I will spray it with a matte varnish first before I do a burnt sienna wash. And I'm just adding a little bit more white, and uh, well, not white, the sheepskin into this just to give it a little bit more color variation. And this is, this is how I paint the whole thing to get it like a very, you know, dirty type grungy piece. And once the paint dries, you'll start to see the crackle effect. I don't know if I can hold it up to show you, but it's starting to, okay, my lighting isn't the best. No, it's starting to crackle right in here, if you can see it. Okay, and I really, I really like that effect on pieces like this. So, okay, I'm just going to continue doing this for the whole piece. Now, what I wanted to also mention is I'm going to do the outside first, and then I am going to paint the inside of the pot pretty much the same way. Uh, because when you're putting something in there, you can see a little bit of the um, inside, and I don't want it to look like it was not painted or a different color. Uh, and then I want to talk to you about how I'm going to do the... I'm sorry, Mike, everything is shaking by me patting. It must be giving you a headache. Okay, I'll try to pat more gently, but it's not going to work that way. Okay. And if you don't like one area, if it looks too dark to you, uh, put, put some lighter paint on. Okay, I want to talk to you about the bottom, and then I will continue patting this and making the camera sh uh, shake offline. You don't need to see it, how I'm doing it, but you know the colors that I used. I'll put them down in the link below now that I finally figured out what color this is. It's so exciting. Okay, um, I am going to put this on felt. Let me stop patting for a second. And how I'm going to do this is because, as you remember, the bottom has the sand, and this is very rough, and I don't want to ruin my floors or if I put this on a piece of furniture. So I am going to put this on a piece of paper. I am going to trace around the outline to get the exact circle of this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in my copy machine, and I'm going to reduce it by a little bit, maybe like by around 10% or something, or 5%, because I don't want the piece of felt that I cut to be sticking right towards the edge. I really just wanted to cover the sand area. So with the paper template that I'm doing while in my copy machine, I'm going to get the exact size of the felt that I want to cover. I'm going to cut a piece of felt out, and then I'm going to use whatever glue I want, whether it be fabric tack or 
I, it really doesn't matter. Whatever glue you have, you can also use your PVA uh, white glues to do that. And that way, it will not hurt anybody's furniture. And then that's about it. Um, it's really, it's a really easy way of painting. It, there is no stress involved in it because you're just mixing colors on your palette, my mat, on your palette and just dabbing it. Dab, and I don't want to shake again. I know I've been shaking the camera. I'm sorry. I don't have a, the greatest setup over here, but you get the idea of how to do this and go ahead and have fun. And again, this is very versatile. You can do so many different things. I mean, when I thought of the um, staining, the oh, see, oh, yes, that was the other thing I wanted to say. I'm so glad when this is done, it's all done and painted. And, I'm, and I put the dark browns and I put the greens in it. I can take a, well, this is heavy, a little bit heavier duty sandpaper, but it's an example. And I can sand over it to get more of the textures, get some of the paint off and get more of the texture down from the terracotta to bring that up a little bit. Like I just did it with my finger here by accident, but you can like even pull up the paint while it's still a little wet. And you can get some, I don't know if you can see what I just did. Yeah, you can see that. You can get some of the terracotta to show if that's what you want. Okay, I keep squirreling. All right, getting back to it. Uh, staining this beautiful dark brown and then doing a marble effect on the top and the bottom. Um, I'm thinking of a black marble with rust lines in it and gold lines in it or you could even have painted this gold and not even stained it and get out the stain there's so many different things you could do so many different ways that you can decorate it and make it yours or make it as a gift for someone else like i said the only thing is these things are heavy i wouldn't suggest mailing it you can try of course but you're going to spend a lot of money on the freight all right so i hope you enjoyed this project it's simple. It's easy. The only thing it does is it takes drawing time and, and finding the pieces. There's going to be an entire link to the Home Depot pieces that I used, but you go ahead and you find, um, different pieces. If you wanted to get a Dollar Tree, um, a planter for the top, so it wouldn't be so heavy and then do this on the bottom, you can do anything you'd like. So until I see you again, have fun creating beauty. Hi again. I'm just coming in with a pop-up or a pop-in or pop something. Um, I have been hearing about this folk art um, antique wax. I've been watching a lot of different YouTube channels because I've been home because I haven't been feeling so well. And I decided that instead of uh, mixing raw umber with water and using that as my antiquing like I've always done, raw umber uh, acrylic paint and water and just slosh it down and rub it off. I decided to try to use this stuff and I have to tell you I'm really uh, happy with the result of it. I put it on some uh, really thickly in some places. I hope you can tell that my screen seems to have more of a yellow yellower green cast than what this really is. Um, I hope the pictures that I take at the beginning of the video will really show the color. And I put it on and then I took it off and then I put it on some more spaces and took and then wiped it off. And then I went back with that linen uh, folk art paint, I think it was folk art. And I just highlighted certain areas like right over here to bring out more of the texture. And I'm really happy with this product. Um, I'm not an expert at it. I just got it. So I'm going to be using it on more projects in the future. But I, I so far so good. I like it. And I want to show you, and I hope I can show you this. I put the felt on the bottom and then I put four just to cover the sand because I didn't like the way that uh, looked. And then I put four of these little um, dots, fabric protected dots on there. And now the project is complete. I put some uh, faux greenery, which you'll see at the beginning of this video. But uh, once again, 
Um, oh, no, I did want to mention some of the crackle with all of this constant putting paint on and paint on. I lost some of the crackling effect, but if you look really closely, you could see it. But overall, it adds to the antique look, which is what I was going. So I would still always begin when I wanted that antique look with the crackle medium, which was the weathered wood. Okay, no more pop-ins. Um, again, have fun creating your masterpiece. And I'll see you soon with another video.